Okay, so now that we've seen how the Kafka console consumer works, we're going to be able to start them in a consumer group. And we'll learn about the group parameter. And it's going to show us how partitions are divided amongst multiple CLI consumers. It is actually a really cool demo. So here is a reminder of what we're trying to expose. So we have, for example, five partitions and then three consumers, and each consumer is consuming from a different partition. They're all distinct. So that's the behavior we're going to try to explore by creating multiple consumers within the same group. So let's get started. Okay, so now let's have a look at file number three called Kafka Consumer in Group. And we are going to first create a topic named third topic with three partitions. This way we can start afresh. Okay, so my topic has now been created. And what we're going to do is that we're going to consume from this topic. So I copy this part, but we add one last argument, which is the group parameter, which specifies a group ID for our console consumer. So by doing minus minus group, my first application, we tell Kafka and the console consumer that we are using a consumer group. And this is the first time we're actually doing it. So we press enter and nothing happens because, well, we need to start producing into our topic. So again, we start a console producer and we use the round robin partitioner to make sure we send messages across different partitions. This is the only way to observe this behavior from a learning perspective, but remember, no production here. So we have launched this uh, producer and if I do a test, as you can see, the message test is appearing in my console consumer. So this is great. And what we're going to do now is that we're going to launch another consumer as part of the first group. Because right now, if I obviously send messages, these messages are going to be received by that one console consumer. But what I'm going to do now is to fold this a little bit and start a console consumer, but on the right-hand side. So with the same command, okay, we consume from the third topic, but the group is my first application. So we have now two consumers in the same group. And if we have a look here, I say, hello, and then world, and then last. As we can see, the hello and the last went to my first consumer and the world went to my second consumer. This is because we have a consumer group and it turns out that this consumer gets two partitions assigned and this one get one partition assigned. And we can push this behavior to having a third consumer. So we are doing a third consumer as part of the group. And now it has joined the group. So again, if I start to send messages, so one, two, and then three, as we can see, the one got here, the two got here, and the three got here. So the messages get spread all across my consumers. And that really shows the power of Kafka because now we have a producer producing to different partitions and consumer consuming from different partitions. And so as I keep on sending messages into Kafka over time, and depends how fast I do it, of course, but they will be spread across all my consumers. And just for the experiment, if I do one more consumer on this consumer group on the same uh, topic, now we have four consumers for three partitions. And it turns out that, well, it's uh, what we call not impossible case, but the one consumer will never be reading data and the other ones may. So this one right here is not assigned any partition. So it's not receiving any messages, which is why you're not seeing it read right now. So just stop a consumer and then things will rebalance. So if I just send A, B and C, as you can see, each of these consumer received one message. If I shut down now this consumer right here, a rebalance happens again. So D, E, and F. And as we can see, D and E got here and F got here. And if I, of course, stop this consumer altogether and just keep one consumer, G, H, I, these messages all go to the same consumer. So we've seen really how that works with consumer groups. On top of it, if I keep on producing, as you can see, there's no more consumer, okay, in my group. But I keep on producing. I produce, for example, J, K, okay, so more messages. If I restart my consumer as part of this group, because it is part of the group and there's been some messages we need to catch up on, these messages are going to be read. So J and K, not necessarily in this order for you because we consume across multiple partitions, but these messages get sent to my consumer because it was catching on 
catching up on the lag it had from before. And to finish, if we start a consumer from beginning as part of a different group, so this time the group name is my second application, which is different from my first application, and I read this from the beginning, I'm going to be reading all the messages in my topic since the beginning, and we're done. And what if you run the same command again? So we read from a group that already existed, but we specify from beginning. Let's see, press enter. And as you can see, nothing happens because from beginning is an argument that is only helpful when there has never been a consumer offset that has been committed as part of the group. So you're saying, hey, for this new group, start from the beginning. But now that we've actually used the my second application as a group and that we've read data in Kafka, as you can see, we don't use the from beginning argument. It doesn't work. And so this will not be taken into account and we'll just be reading from where consumer offsets were last committed. So hopefully you've seen all the core behaviors of Apache Kafka in this lecture and you really understand consumers and consumer groups because that's the core of it. And I hope you like this lecture. I will see you in the next lecture.